Take a break from your busy schedule and join Harold Sala for Guidelines, a five-minute commentary on living. A Harvard University professor pressed to complete a writing assignment decided to write a message on the whiteboard explaining his absence from class and asking the students to take notes. Placed in the center of the large round table was a tape recorder which a student was supposed to engage playing his tape recorded lecture. Towards the end of the hour, the prof dropped by to see how it was going. To his surprise, he found the chairs pushed under the table, and sitting in place of the students' books were six other small tape recorders, all making a copy of his lecture. All six students had headed for the student lounge. Remember the old aphorism, monkey see, monkey do? Why not? In this series, I focused on the importance of your laying a foundation in the lives of your children, strong enough to endure the pressures of youth and the world around us. Everyone agrees that the foundation is important, whether it is in building high-rises made of concrete and steel or in building the lives of your children. There's a vast deal of difference between letting your kids grow up, taking the path of least resistance, or growing kids God's way with purpose and direction. Of the building blocks which produce solidarity and solidity, none is more important than that of faith. Faith in God, faith in each other, yes, faith or confidence that you can achieve your goals. Long ago, God stressed the importance of the parents modeling the message, which then becomes a visual of how we're to live, how we're to treat others, how we relate to life itself. As God's children were about to march into the promised land, he instructed, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them upon your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Not only were they to do this, they were also to write them on the doorposts of their houses as a visual reminder that God wants parents to model the message. How do you do this? In a certain home, the first son ran away and joined the Navy. The second became a lifeguard. The third got a job on a fishing boat. I don't understand why my three sons all have a fascination with the sea, commented the mother to a friend who responded, Hey, have you ever taken a look at the picture in the boy's bedroom? No, why? Well, take a look at it. On the wall of the bedroom where the boys had grown up and slept was a gigantic seascape with a square rigged schooner, sails billowing in the breeze, salt spraying, and it was cutting through the waves. Is there a relationship between what we see and what surrounds us and what we do? Absolutely. How you spend your time, what you listen to and watch on TV, what you do on Sunday, whether you teach your child to pray and read God's Word, or you just let them grow up, makes the difference. Dad, Ask a five-year-old as his mother prepared to take him to church. How old do I have to be before I can stay home on Sunday morning and read the paper with you? Uh-huh. Be careful that you do not forget the Lord, God told his people. A message that we still need today. The admonition is valid. You know, parents, you lead the way. As you model the message, it becomes easy for your kids to understand what it's all about. That's it on today's edition of Guidelines. The greatest gift that you can ever give your child is not a car or stocks and bonds or even an education. It is a faith that will carry him through the fortitudes and the challenges of life. I'm Dr. Harold Saylor. I'd like to hear from you. You can send an email to guidelines at this email address, guidelines at guidelines.org, or visit our website, www.guidelines.org.